the Indian military is quickly emerging as a major power in hypersonic missile technology. Just now. this week, India tested a Mark 8 hypersonic missile capable of flying at nearly 10,000 kilometers per hour. This new hypersonic missile can hit targets over 1,500 kilometers away, giving terror masterminds inside Pakistan absolutely nowhere to hide anymore. This marks a major defence milestone for Bharat, leaving its noisy neighbour far behind. Pakistani defence tech has been the butt of memes and jokes on social media and its technology gap to Bharat is only getting bigger. The hypersonic test has cemented India's position alongside just three other countries in the world with such missile strike capabilities. It also signals a transformative shift in the strategic power balance of South Asia. Unlike the BrahMos missile, which destroyed Pakistani air bases and even the Agni 5 ICBMs, this new Indian hypersonic missile is equipped to travel much, much faster. The test was carried out by Defence Research and Development Organisation or the DRDO. This new hypersonic missile is codenamed ATLDHCM or the Enhanced Tactical Long Distance Hypersonic Cruise Missile and it comes under Project Vishnu. So what is Project Vishnu, you ask? That's the name of the overall project to build India's indigenous hypersonic missile arsenal for multi-domain warfare, capable of hitting every inch, not just inside Pakistan or China, but the entire planet. Project Vishnu is arguably India's most ambitious defence project till date, alongside the AMCA program for an Indian stealth fighter jet. The program involves the development of 12 distinct hypersonic systems, including both offensive missiles as well as missile interceptors, capable of taking down any incoming threats of hypersonic missiles mid-air. Project Vishnu is named after the Hindu deity. It symbolizes preservation alongside power. It reflects India's aspiration to develop hypersonic missile deterrent systems, which promise rapid, precise and unstoppable counter-strikes to any military aggression. This groundbreaking project was actually first initiated in 2023 in response to increasing regional threats and the rapid militarization of neighboring enemies. The first successful scramjet engine test under this project was conducted in November 2024 when the engine ran for 1,000 seconds. The ETLDHCM is the first major missile to emerge from this Vishnu program. Though India actually conducted its first test of a hypersonic missile on November 16, 2024, the hypersonic test came out of the blue and reflects the rapid progress India's defence ecosystem is making quietly behind the scenes. This new hypersonic missile demonstrated remarkable capabilities on the very first attempt, achieving speeds of up to Mark 8, that is three times faster than India's BrahMos, which is already widely considered as the world's fastest cruise missile to prove itself in combat. The LDH-CM combines cutting-edge material science, advanced propulsion systems and precision-guided technology. With a strike range of 1500 kilometers, it can deliver warheads weighing 1000 to 2000 kilograms, including both conventional as well as nuclear payloads. When this missile is combined with nuclear submarines, these hypersonic missiles would form the most robust nuclear deterrent in India's arsenal. The LDH-CM is capable of penetrating deep into adversary territory, targeting essential assets such as radar systems, command centers and naval vessels. It is also very adaptable, which means it has the capability of being launched from land, air as well as sea platforms. Its advanced scramjet propulsion allows it to cover vast distances within minutes and maneuver at low altitudes, making it virtually impossible to intercept. Project Vishnu's successful development positions India at the forefront of next-generation missile technology, significantly enhancing its strategic deterrence and dramatically reducing enemy response times. Project Vishnu will give Indian military the ability to surpass conventional air defences even at vast distances. 
Now, India is not focusing on developing its own hypersonic weapon arsenal out of the blue. India has, for a very long time, had volatile relations with its immediate neighbour, Pakistan. The relations between the two have become further strained, especially after multiple terror attacks on Indian soil in 2024 and 2025, all of them orchestrated and sponsored by Pakistan-based terror groups. The most recent one being the terror attack in Pehelgam, in which 26 innocent Indian civilians were killed, mostly Hindus. Moreover, the Balakot skirmish just a few years back, again triggered by cross-border terror strike, that time in Pulwama, was followed by a limited aerial conflict. That incident too exposed limitations in India's deep strike capabilities as Indian Sukhoi 30 MKI fighter jets along with Mirage 2000s had to enter Pakistani airspace to bomb the terror headquarters. And while the Indian Air Force fighter jets successfully achieved their target and returned back home, the need for longer-range missiles was evident. Pakistan reportedly also mobilized its critical assets including the Nasra tactical nuclear missile units. For Indian security planners, this became a pivotal moment that led to the realization that speed, precision and deep penetration would be essential in deterring and neutralizing any threat of Pakistani tactical nuclear weapons even before they can be activated. The ET-LDH-CM directly addresses that specific need. Now, military analysts believe the missile can disable most of Pakistani command and control centers along with forward air bases or even mobile nuclear units in under seven minutes in case a new conflict breaks out. Given Pakistan's reliance on short-range tactical nuclear weapons to counter India's conventional military superiority, the ET-LDH-CM is seen as a tool that neutralizes that option preemptively. During the 2025 India-Pakistan conflict, India deployed its BrahMos missiles along with the SCALP cruise missiles, decisively exposing the vulnerabilities of Pakistan's Chinese supplied air defense systems, especially the HQ-9 and HQ-16 networks. Pakistan's military is heavily dependent on Chinese supply technology and India's decisive strategic and operational triumph during Operation Sindur has laid bare critical weaknesses in their military. After India and Pakistan officially agreed to cessation of hostilities, a critical review of operation highlighted the inadequacy of Pakistan's air defense systems, particularly the Chinese-made HQ-9 and HQ-16 against India's advanced missile technology and electronic warfare capabilities. Military observers claim Pakistan's $3 million per unit HQ-9 surface-to-air missile system deemed as a cornerstone of its air defense failed miserably to detect, let alone intercept, India's BrahMos missiles as they hit multiple Pakistani airbases. Satellite images confirmed that Indian missiles were easily able to penetrate Pakistan's air defense grid and target key military installations by leveraging superior missile technology, satellite intelligence, as well as electronic warfare. Even Indian military's loitering munitions humiliated Pakistan's air defense network by destroying several HQ-9 batteries, including one in Lahore, amplifying losses of fighter jets, surveillance aircraft, and drones and radar sites in the subsequent conflict. Project Vishnu's hypersonic missile program represents a watershed moment for Indian military. It indicates a very significant advancement in India's defense posture and enables itself as a prominent global technological and military power. By deploying the ET-LDH-CM, a missile capable of sustained speeds exceeding Mark 8 and with a range of 1500 kilometers in just minutes, India gains an unprecedented advantage over its adversaries. Beyond strengthening strategic deterrence, the scientific and engineering breakthroughs achieved through Project Vishnu are poised to benefit India's broader space, aviation and high-tech sectors, positioning the country as a leader in high-impact, dual-use technologies. Now, there are multiple advanced features that make it formidable, including low-altitude flight, 
rapid mid-course maneuvers and state-of-the-art scramjet propulsion which all will drastically reduce response times for any potential adversary. Now, India recently has been aiming to become more self-reliant in defence sector as well as emerge as a major defence exporter. By promoting indigenous innovation and public-private partnership, this project not only ensures national security but also promotes progress in aerospace and civilian sectors. But what do you believe? Will Pakistan ever be able to match India's defence manufacturing capabilities? Leave a comment with your opinion, hit the like button and subscribe to InConnect News.